everybody, welcome to another micro pet tutorial. Yay! Can I just ask you guys a question? How long have you been subscribed for? Now, don't put it in the comments because I'll get absolutely spammed by comments, so don't do that. But please, can you vote now in the top right? How long have you been subscribed for? Have you been subscribed for a week, a year, a month, a day, <laughs> an hour? Yeah, I want to know. It'd be really interesting to find out. Now, why am I asking how long have you been subscribed for? Well, if you've been subscribed for a year or more, you probably remember this video where I made an ID lock. Now, surprisingly, that video is actually my third most viewed video on the entire channel. <laughs> it has nearly 300,000 views. And recently, it was actually featured in a video by a very, very popular Minecraft YouTuber named Captain Sparkles, which was a little surreal. <laughs> that was a little crazy. Anyway, since I made that video about a year ago, I thought it was about time to revamp the redstone to make it a little bit better. Okay, so first of all, let's just remove that dropper system for the input, because that's just a bit ugly. Let's make it hidden. Secondly, let's improve where we actually pick the ID card from. That'll help. And uh, yeah, let's remove all the redstone and put it underground. Yeah, now it's mind blowing. Okay, that's enough nattering. Let's actually finally see how this build actually works. So at the moment, we have a closed door and it looks like there's no way to get through. Now, of course you can get in with a pickaxe. But that's the same with any security build in Minecraft. So like I said, at the moment, this door is closed. Now to open it, what we have to do is grab one of our ID cards, throw it down here. You can see the floor picks up and the door opens very nicely. And we can walk through. Well, that was a fail. <laughs> we can walk through. And then when we're done, press the button and the door closes. And now we are stuck behind here and we can take out our ID card and go about our business. Now, really, when we want to get out, all we do is press the button here and walk through. And that's it. It's super, super simple. So literally throw an ID card down here. The door opens. We can take our ID card out. That doesn't matter. Press the button and the door closes. Then when we want to get out, press the button again and we can get out. It's really that simple. Now I've spent quite a lot of time trying to make this build basically idiot proof. <laughs> so if you were to throw down, for example, 20 ID cards, that doesn't matter. They're going to be all picked up. We can close the door even whilst they're filtering and they'll make their way into this chest, as you can see. Now, if somebody sees you throw down a piece of paper and thinks, oh, I'll do the same. So they get their bit of paper like this and then they throw it down here. Nothing is going to happen because that bit of paper has made its way into this chest here. Now, I've made this chest nice exposed so you can have a hopper line going wherever you like. So it has to be your ID. Okay, so now taking a quick look at the rest zone, as you can see, it is really nice and compact, very nice and small. And I know you're gonna hate me for saying this, I can feel the pitchforks already, but it's actually very simple. <coughs> Don't hurt me. Honestly, when we build it, you'll realize it's very nice and simple. Trust me. <laughs> now, the great thing about this design, once we know how to build it, we can kind of implement it to any door we like, which I'll show you as well and in the tutorial. Okay, so now you've seen the build and you've seen it working. Let's get on with this tutorial. And here's what you need for the build. I'm not gonna be reading this one really fast because frankly, the list is too long. <laughs> okay, to start this build, like usual, we firstly need to determine where we want our build to actually be. So what I've done here is I've laid down one block and this block is where our door is going to sit. Okay, <laughs> so this is the outside where we throw our key card down. And this is our inside where our chest and button will be. So our door will go on this side of this block here. So you can see it's on the far side of this block and our door surround will go like this. So our chest will go here, our button will go here and we'll throw our item down here. So this is the outside, that is the inside, okay? <laughs> Just make sure you got that the right way around. <laughs> now after that, Break out one block from the right, three blocks from the left, one, two, three, three blocks from the front, one, two, three, and three blocks from the back, one, two, three. And now we can join up these lines like this. And remove the ones in the middle. And also we can remove the ones underneath these two pillars here, one and two. Now sadly we have to dig this out five more times. This hole needs to be six deep. So at the moment it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wide by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. 
but also it needs to be six deep. So dig this out five more times. Okay, like that. So our hole now is seven by seven by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so for our first bit of redstone, we're gonna work on our collection system, how the floor picks up our item. So we do that using minecarts with hoppers. Very strange. <laughs> so first of all, place a block down like this, and then a hopper going toward this block. We uh, sit the minecart with a hopper on top of a hopper so the hopper can funnel into that hopper, if that makes sense. <laughs> then crouch and place a rail, and then place your minecart hopper like that. So any item in that hopper is going to make its way into this one here, as you can see. And now we need to disguise this with a block. So we place a block here and one out. Make sure this is a flooring block and two blocks up and place a piston down like that. Now, if I were to power that piston now, basically this whole stack would move down because this rail is acting like a block. So we need to crouch and remove that rail like that. Crouching just makes it slightly easier. <laughs> so now when I fire this piston, as you can see, that block gets pushed into this minecart because this minecart is an entity. Now we can remove that piston lever. So now any block we throw down will make its way into this hopper. Perfect. Now what we can do now is just place some of your flooring blocks round like so. Now we need to work on the item filter, Su. Place a block to the right and one down. Remove the first one and have a hopper going toward this block. Now this is going to be our item filter hopper. So in this hopper, we're going to need 41 of whatever we're using for our ID, and then four blocks you're never, ever going to place into our system. So now would be a good time to rename those items. So grab an anvil, place in our paper, and it doesn't need to be paper, by the way, it can be anything. And let's just rename it. I'm going to rename mine ID. You can rename it to whatever you like. <laughs> so 41 of those will go in this hopper. So 41 ID in that first slot there. And then in the four rest, we're going to place four items that are never going to be put in our system. So now this item filter will work. But if someone throws in some dirt by mistake, this build will break. So I'm going to remove that four dirt and I'm going to rename it. I'm going to rename it so it's completely random. So it's never going to be placed into our system. Let's just rename it George. <laughs> so four pieces of dirt called George, because I know that somebody's not going to throw in a piece of dirt called George. <laughs> the contingency is a remote one. Now to finish off our item filter, what you need to do is come to the left hand side, crouch and place a block here and one down, remove this block and have a comparator coming away from that hopper there and it should turn on. Then place a block here, one out and one up and one to the right and dust on all three. One, two and three. Now you'll see this dust is on and this dust is on but this one is not. Now that's because this amount of items is only giving a redstone signal strength of two. So that comparator is looking at that hopper and based on how many items are in that hopper, it's giving a signal strength of two. If I were to place in one more of our ID, as you can see here, then this turns on. So now it is a signal strength of three. That's basically how an item filter works because when it gets to 42, then we need to remove one of the IDs. So as soon as it gets to here, then this hopper needs to lose one back to 41. Does that make sense? <laughs> so we do that by placing a piston like that, and then a redstone torch. Then grab a sticky piston and place it on the side of that torch, which should extend. Temporary block on top of it, one toward the back, remove this block, and have another hopper going toward that block. So you, could, you can see it's going toward that block there. So as you can see that at the moment, this sticky person is extended with nothing in it. So as soon as I place in another ID card in here, that redstone dust will turn on, powering this piston, unpowering this torch, moving this piston down. So this hopper going down to here, one of those items or the items will start making their way into that hopper. As soon as that hopper gets back to 41, that dust will turn off, powering this torch again, moving this piston upward like that. <laughs> You can see, so even if I were to put in, if I had to put in all of them, for example, like this, you can see they filter all the way down until we have 41. 
brilliant. So it's all about signal strength. So at the moment, when we throw an item in, it makes its way into that hopper, but we don't want that. No, we want it to go up to a chest to about here. So, first you place a temporary block here and one out. Remove this one. Then have a hopper going toward that block and then have a chest here. So if an item were to go in this hopper, it would make its way into this chest and then into this hopper like this. Brilliant. Now, remove this block, crouch, and place a dropper. Make sure it's a dropper, not a dispenser, facing upward like that. So now it'll go from here to here to here into here. Another dropper upward, another one upward, and then finally crouch and place a chest on top. So later we'll make an item elevator so that item makes its way from the bottom dropper all the way up into that chest. Good. But before we do that, we actually need to work on opening and closing the door. All right, now we can work on my favorite part, which is the opening and closing of the door. I love the system. <laughs> so first you place a block here and one down. Remove the first one and have some dust. So it's quite obvious if I were to power that dust, that door would open. If I were to remove the power source, the dust will turn off and the door will close. That's very easy. Now, place a block uh, next to that block and a slab down. Remove this block and have a comparator going toward that block. Now place a dropper facing upward off the side of that slab. Crouch and place a block up and one up. Remove this one and then have a dropper going down. So we've made here an RS Norlatch, one of my favorite components. <laughs> so if I were to throw in a dropper, sorry, if I were to throw in a rubbish block, basically a block you don't mind throwing away in this bottom dropper, nothing's going to happen. If I power that bottom dropper, that item is going to make its way to the top dropper, as you can see, opening our door. And then when I want to close the door, basically I just need to power the top dropper, like that. So you can see that's how it's going to work. Now, when I throw an item into our system, so one of our ID cards, like I said earlier, we get a signal strength of three, so that dust turns on. And we're going to use the same function for this bit here. So place a block here and a sticky person out going toward our RS null latch and then dust on top. So that dust should be off because we can count one is on, two is on, but three is off as it is over here. As soon as one more item goes in here, that dust will turn on extending our piston. Brilliant. And it will extend our piston because we have a resident block here, moving that resident block to here, which will power that bottom dropper, moving that item into this dropper, powering this comparator, powering this dust, opening our door. Very simple. So if I were to throw an item in, you can see our door opens. Now, as you saw earlier, our button to close and open the door is this one here. So how do we close the door from this button? It looks impossible, doesn't it? But no, it's not. And here's why. If we were to place a block here and one out, and then a comparator coming away from that block, I'm just gonna place some blocks in here like this. You can see here that redstone signal strength is only one because it's only one block in that dropper. If I were to power that dust with a button, that signal strength will be 15. So you can see all of that turns on. So that's 15. That will still be 15 because the comparator has just moved the dust over. That will be 14 and that will be 13. So you can see this is not powered, but as soon as I press the button, it is powered. That's strange, isn't it? <laughs> so we can use that to power our RS null latch from the other side. So we place a block up, then some glass, a block down and a slab. You may be thinking, why am I not using normal blocks? The reason for that is because of later. <laughs> we will have redstone dust around here and stuff like that, and you can't have full blocks. So don't worry about it at the moment. Then place dust like this, one and two. You can see that one is on, but that one is not on. And then from that dust, we're going to have an observer going toward that bottom dropper. So the face is detecting that dust. And as you can see, our door is closed because when that observer updates, it's going to fire a pulse into this bottom dropper. And if you watch my last video, not my last video, my last rest of video about compacting, you'll know that if you power a dropper with an observer directly, no matter where the item is, it's going to fire back into that bottom dropper, even if that item is in the top dropper. So it works backwards from what we have down here. Our item goes in, our RS Norlatch turns on, and then when we press the button, that observer will fire, moving the item down. 
closing our door. And that's how we can have the same button to open our door as we can to close it. So now we have the opening and closing of the door and we have the item filter. So practically everything's working apart from we don't get our ID back. <laughs> it stays down the bottom here. So now we need a way for that ID to make its way up to here. Now we do that by powering these droppers. So first you place a block here and one down and then have a comparator coming outward. So as soon as an item goes in that dropper, our comparator will give an output. Now come around here and what you need to do is place a block here and one out, remove this one and then dust on top. Now you'll see this dust is connecting. Now we don't want that. So we need to place another block up like that. You can see that dust is on its own, not connecting to anything. Then we need a sticky piston here. Now that is why we use glass and slabs <laughs> because if we didn't, then um, when we power this dust on top, that piston would, uh, would extend, which we don't want. And also that's why we use the slab here as well, because if we didn't, that dust there, hold on, this dust here would power a solid block powering this bottom dropper again, which we don't want. <laughs> so that's why we had to use a transparent block using a slab. Anyway, getting back to this, <laughs> that comparator will turn on powering this block, powering this dust, which will extend this piston. We need an observer facing downward, so the face facing upward. Temporary block here, an observer facing upward here. So when that piston moves, that observer will go to here, like that, causing, causing a redstone clock, because those two observers will be uh, observing each other, so firing back and forth. Place a block up, one here, and dust. And surprisingly, that's everything completely done. So if I were to place in an item in here, you can see our item thing starts, our item thing, the item thing, <laughs> and it goes into here. So even if we were to put in all 23, they will all make their way up to here. Now, just a word of warning. If you're building this on a phone or a tablet, you may sometimes, if you were stupid enough to put in quite a lot of items, for example, 23, you may find only 22 come up to the top. Now, don't worry, one of them will be stuck in the middle. But again, like I said, don't worry, because as soon as you place in another ID card, it'll make its way up to the top. It'll flash through. Just remembered something. You need to place in one more chest next to this one, but not connecting to it. Like that, you can place it in a barrel, doesn't matter. But that one basically has all the items inside it, which don't go into the item filter. That makes sense. So if someone throws in, for example, a diamond block or a, a piece of dirt, it'll make its way into that chest. And if you want to, you can place hoppers down like this and have it filtering into a storage system, whatever you like, all right? <laughs> so that is it completely done. So now we can cover up our redstone like this with our blocks. And that's it. So if we throw an ID card down here, you can see our door opens, makes our way up to the chest. Brilliant. Close it. And that's it. And of course, I would recommend building a wall here because you don't want people just walking around. <laughs> Now, I do realize that some of you may want to build this exact design, but for your own doors, for example, a two by two or three by three, it doesn't really matter. Now to do that, what I've done here is I've laid out this very simple design. Now it's absolutely hideous because it's huge, but it's super simple just to help you understand how you can do it. So the basic principle is the same. When you throw an item down, it works exactly the same. So it goes into an item filter. When that item filter gets to 42, it allows one of the items to go through into our item lift, or then goes up. I'm using a very simple auto firing dropper into an item lift. It's really simple. When you, you can download the world in the description and you can have a look for yourself. Now you may notice that this item filter is slightly different to the one I use over there, but you can use whatever item filter you really want to. It doesn't really matter. But this one works by having two bits of dust on like that. When we get to 42 items, that turns on powering this block, unpowering this torch, allowing one of the items to go down and into our item lift. At the same time, as another item goes into here, we need to set off another chain of events. So when 42 items go into here, so when another one goes in there, like I said, we get a signal strength of three. That's why we have this dust here. So when this dust powers, this block powers, which powers the bottom section of our RS null latch, moving that block up to here. Now, when we do that, when our RS null latch turns on, as it were, we need our door to open. So that item is going to move up to here, powering that comparator, powering that block, unpowering this torch, unpowering this dust, opening up 
uh, this door because these pistons will attract like this. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and now we can take our item from here. And the confusing part can be the closing, but honestly, when you break it down, it's not too bad. So when I power this button here, this dust obviously will power here. It will also power this block, which will power this dropper, moving that item down to here, which turns off our comparator, which turns on this torch, powering these pistons. So our door will close. Does that make sense? So that's just the two ways of the RS Norlatch. But also with this button, another thing's gonna happen. When this dust powers, sorry, my phone's going, <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> when this button powers, this dust, like I said, will power. And at the same time, as you can see, it's going to power this block, unpowering this torch and turning off this dust. So our door opens. Can you see that? So that's how you've got it to work. You've got to make that button, turn off our RS null latch, which will close the door, and at the same time, power the block with the torch, which unpowers our door. Just before we finish, can I just have a brief heart to heart with you guys and say a massive, a huge thank you for the positivity around my last video. And also someone actually put in the comment section that I might have the nicest community <laughs> on YouTube. My comment section is really nice. And again, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's really awesome. So thank you so much. Oh, that was again quite a long video, a lot of talking. I'm, again, I'm losing my voice. It's been a recurring theme for quite a lot of my videos recently. <laughs> Soon I'll be like, hello everybody, welcome to another Fire Good Video Tutorial. <laughs> Anyway, let's just say our goodbyes. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please give us a like. And if you really loved it, make sure you subscribe with that wonderful subscribe button for more awesome content. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>